So I'm just going to give you a couple quick tips on how you might want to consider styling your map. I'm not going to actually show you how to create the layout or anything like that. You should know how to do that. Um, but just to style your map, first off, we need to have the inundation zone. Um, this layer, you don't really need to show the full extent of it. Uh, you don't want to have it, or this layer, you don't want to show as like a full uh, color, right? Well, what we can do is we can click color properties. We want to make it in some semi-transparent shade of blue. So let's see what we get with setting it to something like this. That looks pretty decent. Um, maybe we want to edit the symbol a little bit more. If we go to properties, we can set the outline color and set that to a non-transparent shade of blue. Okay, so that highlights that this is the inundation zone. So now we've got a couple more things to show. We want to show the roads layer. We want on this to emphasize the arterial roads. So we need to go unique values symbolize by it's going to be called road class. Now we're only interested in arterial being distinct from anything else. So we can select all the ones that aren't. You can just uh, hold the control key and click individually to select rows. Select everything that is not arterial and then hit the delete button. So we're gonna change the color of the arterial roads. Pick a color that you like. Um, doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna go with orange and set the line width to one or to two. See what that looks like. You can adjust it as you see fit. Again, I'm not saying that your map needs to look just like this. I'm just giving you some stylistic options. Now for the all other values, let's change this one to say a thin black line, one point black, apply that, see where that gets us. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. It gives us a contrast and you'd want to edit this so that it doesn't say all other values on your legend. Um, you could just say other roads or something like that. Again, other roads isn't necessarily the best term to use, but you just want to distinguish arterial and non-arterial, however you want to go about that. Um, so we also need to show the uh, properties at risk. So we will symbolize this layer as well. Now for this one, uh, we are primarily interested in distinguishing between residential and uh, anything else. So uh, we could do two approaches to this. Uh, let's just leave this as a single symbol uh, and we'll turn on this population at risk layer, right? Because this is just the residential properties. So we can style this one and this one separately and just leave them like that. So we will do the properties at risk. Uh, set that to some color, pick whatever you want. Um, just remember the principles of uh, uh, color choice, right? So you don't want to say do a red and a green for these because you're looking to distinguish between two things. So uh, we can say, go with a light yellow for the base layer, all the properties. And again, I'm not saying these are the best color choices to use, I'm just giving you some uh, And then for the population at risk, you would just change this to a different color. Point is, we're just trying to get it so you can distinguish between residential and non-residential, right? And so then on the legend here, you would rename this residential and you would rename this non-residential. And so then when you add these to the legend, they'll come up 
like this, right? And so we've got this yellow, this red, and this orange. Might not be the easiest colors to distinguish, right? So I'm saying you don't necessarily want to copy the color choices that I'm laying out here, but notice that you do want to try and make things that are clean and crisp looking. So you might want to go with a different shade or something like that. And the last step is the shelters. So we want to do um, size these symbols. So we can do uh, proportional symbols here. I think we go with that, see what happens here. Uh, proportional symbols to capacity. No, we don't want proportional symbols. We want graduated symbols. And so we go with capacity, two classes. Uh, we'll set the minimum size to something bigger than four, we'll go to 10. We'll set the maximum size to maybe a little bit bigger, so 24. And so this is meant to highlight the capacity of the two shelters. And you probably don't want to stick with yellow for this color because you got yellow for this. But the point is you want to distinguish between the capacities on for these two shelters because you can use this, speak to this in your analysis, right? What's the shelter's capacity here, here relative to where most of the residential houses is located? And what does that say about the proposed shelter locations? Um, yeah, so... Again, uh, I'll leave it to you to actually choose some more fitting colors, but um, generally speaking, you're going to want to go with a semi-transparent inundation zone. You're going to want to use one color to denote the arterial road with probably a thicker line and then thin black for the roads. For the residential and non-residential, you can just show all the properties and then have just the residential properties selected above that. And for the shelters, you're going to want to go with some sort of graduated symbology.